once again I want to say welcome to this present day prophecy update number two and today we are going to discuss wars and rumors of wars. Now I've got some very interesting uh, material that I want to share with you so I'm asking you to give attention and also I'm going to ask to share this video um, as far as you can so that the information can go out and that people will get blessed by the Word of God and that people might see how close we are to the coming and the soon return of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So, and I also want to urge you to go to our YouTube channel called Dion Allers and to go and subscribe and click on a notification bell and you will be sure to, to receive new updates whenever we post that, the new sermons, and that you can go and follow there. I also want to encourage you to, if you want to receive um, messages from us via WhatsApp, you can just save my wife's number, her number is on the screen, save it and just send her a WhatsApp and say that you want to uh, receive the weekly messages. So then we will also uh, keep you informed and we will send you the weekly messages via WhatsApp. And but with any further ado, I'm going to start this week's present day prophecy update and we are going to talk about wars and rumors of wars. Now read with me what the Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24 verse 6. Jesus said, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. All these th are the beginning of sorrows, he said in verse 8. Now I want you to notice something that if we read through Matthew uh, 24 and we go and read in Luke 21 and so on, we will read that Jesus said, especially here, he said, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. The question, of course, is that uh, there always was wars and there always was rumors of wars. So what makes this different? But I want you to heed to something and to listen to me that this prophecy uh, speaks about actually that all these things and Jesus names the signs of our times. And he said, when you shall see all these things come to pass and the, the spirit of the text really there is when you shall see all these things at once coming to pass, look up for your salvation is at hand. Basically, there's ever been, always there's, there's wars, there was rumors of wars, there was pestilences and all these things. But all of these things happening at one time, that's something that we, and in a time which we are living in right now. So Jesus is really speaking about the, the times which we are living in right now with the eye on events that is going on in the world today and I hope you are excited with me because I'm excited to share this with you. Now first of all I want to show you a, a post that Breaking Israel News had on and this was posted on August the 28th of 2019 and it says facing tensions on multiple fronts is Israel on the verge of all-out war? That's the question. And now we can read there together what the post says. Why so? It's a rare move to brief a rival like guns. And actually the post is just speaking about uh, Benjamin Netanyahu was briefing the blue and white party leader, Benny Gantz. He was briefing him and nobody knows what, exactly what that briefing was. But they suspect that this move of uh, one political leader briefing another one and actually they are rivals so the, they said this is rare but wh what's the reason and it was possibly because of an all-out war that's that, that could be and that's imminent so let's just continue reading and it says and possible signal that Israel may be readying itself for a major conflict on one of one or more fronts Hamas and Islamic Jihad in the Gaza Strip show no signs of reinning in their efforts to attack Israel and whispers and murmuring can be heard about an imminent Israel land insertion into the coastal territory. At the same time, the Lebanese border can explode at any time, depending on Iran and Hezbollah. While situations in Syria continues to remain tense amid the Iranian buildup there. 
Now, it did, the, the post go further on and it says, given the tensions on these multiple fronts, is Israel on the verge of an out uh, all-out war with Iran and its proxies. Now, it's very interesting that Iran, the only uh, vision that Iran really has is to wipe Israel off the global map, from the global map. And I've stated that in the previous session. And if you go on to the news and you go and look what Iran really is all about these days since 1979, they were, they were so preoccupied from that time on under the, new, that, that, um, the supreme leader's reign because in 1979 and before that, uh, they were friends with Israel. But from 1979, uh, in, in the area, in the time which we are living in now, uh, Iran has really started and they, they are preoccupied to wipe Israel from the global map. That's their, that's their heart's desire. Now this post shows that Israel is getting it from all sides down in Gaza. There's two terrorist organizations called Hamas and the Islamic Jihadist group. They are in Gaza. Then from the north they have Lebanon, Hezbollah, and I'm going to talk about Hezbollah in a moment's time. They've got Syria, and in Syria it is Russia, it is Iran, uh, some of its proxies, Hezbollah, and it's also Turkey is there, and so on and so forth. And actually Iran has cleverly started to form a circle around, a half a circle around Israel. Israel is here and Iran has started to, fill, uh, to form a circle surrounding Israel with its proxies. In the north, in Lebanon, they've got Hezbollah. And in Syria, also in the Golan Heights, on the Syrian side, there is Hezbollah. And in Iranian entrenchments are there. And I'm going to show you later on. And then, um, of course, Iran itself. They are busy developing this long-range missiles that can shoot. And actually, they, they have some of this uh, missiles already. It's ready. And then in Yemen, it is the Houthis there. And also in Sudan, there's some proxies there. But Iran has cleverly, and actually according to the Word of God, it is really not that clever because they are not going to destroy Israel. They are not going to chase Israel into the sea. But in fact, God is going to destroy them. And I'll show you in the future what the Bible really teaches concerning that. But this is what Israel, and now in this time that which we are living in now, Israel is starting to get themselves ready for an all-out um, attack on them against all these proxies of Iran and also Hamas is a proxy of Iran in Gaza. So as you can see Israel is really under tension but we know that God is going to keep them safe in his hands. Let's just continue. Also, this was posted on the 29th of August in 2019. New Israeli technology, I want you to listen to this. New Israeli technology can hijack hostile drones and use them against the enemy. Anti-drone technology that was recently developed in Israel can take control of a hostile drone and land them anywhere it wants. Taking over drones without causing any damage enables Israel to not only reuse them, but also extract any data that the drone collected before its interception. The system that we developed can detect hostile drones at a range of up to three and a half kilometers. And so it goes on. Let's just skip to the last part. It says Israel reported that it carried out an attack in Syria on Saturday to foil a drone attack in northern Israel by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps Quads Force Special Ops Unit. The, Syria, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that two men from the Lebanese Hezbollah terrorist organization and an Iranian were killed in the attack. Now, what happened is that Israel got hold of drones that was used, that was supposed to be used. In fact, two men flew from 
Lebanon, who was part of Hezbollah. Now you may ask, who is Hezbollah? I'll come to that, I'll show you now. But it was part of this terrorist organization and they flew all the way to Iran to receive training, how to operate the killer drones, as it's dubbed. And so they came back and from, I think it was from the area of Syria, they launched these drones. But Israel, uh, with its phenomenal high-tech uh, and, and, and s intelligence, they were able to capture these drones with their technology, capture these drones, and they actually send it back. They send it to Lebanon and it exploded in Lebanon at some of the high quarters where the Hezbollah leaders are busy preparing and manufacturing precision guided missiles that was uh, that was financed by Iran. Now, of course, Israel, uh, they intercepted this drone and they sent it back and it exploded in Lebanon. And also, this two uh, young people that was operating the drones that was trying to bring explosive devices which was, which was attached to the drones into Israel. The, uh, Israel as its military name states, it's a defense force, it's not an offensive force, it's a defensive force. They, fend, they defended themselves by, of course, destroying the, the people that was trying to attack them. Israel have to do this. So I just want you to see, we are talking about wars and rumors of wars. And you can see that how there is wars and rumors threats of wars going on and it's just escalating day by day and we're going to continue i'll show you now further on but just to see how god has blessed israel with this technology to intercept drones and to they say they can they can take 200 drones at a time at one moment they can intercept 200 drones with their technology and send them wherever they want to and extract the information that was placed on that drones. Let's just continue. Also in Breaking Israel, and this was posted a little bit earlier this year on July the 10th, it says that Netanyahu warns Iran, Israeli jets can reach every place in the Middle East. The remarks came just eight days after Mojaba Zulmur, chair of the Iranian parliament's National Security and Foreign Policy Commission, was quoted by the mayor news agency as saying that if the U.S. attacks us, only half an hour will remain of Israel's lifespan. Of course, Iran calls America the big Satan and they call uh, Israel the little Satan. So they just basically said, listen, uh, if you try to attack us, America, we will not only retaliate, but we will, we will attack Israel. And the moment you attack us, only half an hour will be left on the, for the existence of the Israeli nation. Now, it's just a lot of uh, bluff. They, they, they say these kind of things, but actually they are so dumb. There's no other words to use for, to describe these rhetoric um, and this, the, this type of language that they use, it's only chattery, it's only godless chattery and it's rhetoric that they throw, it's, it means nothing. But let's just continue. On June 20th, an interview translated by the Middle East Media Research Institute for Iran Defense Minister General Hossein Lagan told Iraq's Alun Yab TV that Israel knows that Iran will erase its entity and uproot it from existence in case of a war. Again you see, again you see that Iran has only one desire and it's to uproot the Jewish people, to uproot and to destroy Israel completely from the global map. On Sunday, Netanyahu warned that an Iranian decision to increase its enriched uranium beyond bounds of the 2015 nuclear agreement is a very dangerous step and implored the international community to stop Iran from getting closer to creating atomic weapons. And this is what Iran is pursuing, to create an atomic bomb. Not to use it on Russia or North Korea or anywhere else, but they make this and are busy enriching themselves with uranium 
and they, they, they use this, they're going to use this, and it's going to happen, friends, but there's a prophecy in the Bible, which I will come to, that shows that God will intervene, and the Bible clearly states that nuclear weapons will be used, and I'm going to show it to you uh, if the Lord wills and Terry is to come. As we continue our Bible study, I will show it to you, but from the Bible, that God is going to intervene and it's going to blown up, be blown up in Iran. And I'll show it to you, God willing. But this is, their, this is their desire to wipe Israel from the global map. And they are preoccupied with this. They spend their economy by, by um, financing like Hamas in Gaza and also Hezbollah in the north and some of its other proxies in the Houthis in Yemen and so on and so forth. Only for one reason. They, they use their ec economy to finance terrorism. That's why President Donald Trump said it's the biggest and also Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said uh, not too long ago they are the biggest and we know they are the biggest terror sponsor uh, sponsored uh, country in the world. They sponsor terrorism and it's all to destroy the little Satan and big Satan according to them. From the Jerusalem Post we read and this was posted September the 3rd it was posted today. Listen to what it says. Security footage captures Hezbollah missile narrowly missing RAF vehicle. The video captured by security cameras at Kibbutz Yeron shows an anti-tank missile striking the road as an RAF Zehev vehicle comes into view from the side of the explosion seconds later. Now, I'll show you this video, but just bear with me for a moment. Minutes after the Hezbollah anti-tank missile hit, soldiers with badges and fake blood were flown by a helicopter to Rambam Medical Center in Haifa. They were taken off the helicopters in stretches and were discharged after the rounds of fighting ended. Hezbollah broke the biggest red line for dozens of years for Israel by talking it, it across the border, not in the contested Sheba farms area where the group had previously targeted IDF troops, said Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah. The attack against Avivim was a message to Israel, Nasrallah warned, and Nasrallah of course is the Hezbollah leader in Lebanon, the southern Lebanon area. We have no longer red lines. He said, and what happened, the, this is so awesome of Israel, what they did, they, they actually used um, the, the Muslim, the, some of their, their tactics against them. And what happened was uh, Hezbollah from the north in Lebanon, which of course, as I've already stated, is a party, is an organization that wants to destroy Israel from the global map. And they launched this missile, and the video will show soon, but they launched this missile from Lebanon, and it actually, and it was a precision-guided missile, but it didn't struck the, the vehicle. It struck just in front of the vehicle, and then a second missile hit just right behind it. Now, from TV7 News in Israel, the commentator said it was a divine intervention from God. And surely, friends, it is a divine intervention from God Almighty. But the funny thing is, and the awesome thing is, that that Israel knew about this attack. Their, in, their, their intelligence is so far forward than any other country. They knew that this, this attack is going to happen. And they, they attacked this vehicle. They didn't strike the vehicle, but they, they, the missile landed just in front of it and behind it. And what did Israel do? They knew about this attack, it's going to happen, they knew exactly where it's going to happen, when it's going to happen, everything beforehand. And when it happened, they flew in with their helicopters and they pretended to lift up soldiers from the ground and they flew to a hospital in Haifa and uh, the helicopter landed 
and the soldiers was taken from the helicopter with fake blood and Israel did this and they posted this and Nasrallah of course who is the leader of the Hezbollah organization he was shouting yes we, we killed them we've hurt them and Israel of course then later on Benjamin Netanyahu made a statement and he said I've got some news and that is that there is no casualties no not even a scratch on any of our soldiers and Israel did this to see the way Nasrallah is going to respond and of course he was furious he was furious because of this but of course it also gives Israel the opportunity it gives them the the, the, the yeah the opportunity to strike back at Lebanon but Israel being a defensive force, its, its, its army says we do not want a, a full-scale war, but they quickly warned if someone did get hurt, any of our citizens or any soldier, there would have been a full-scale, full-scale, full-out war would have been. And also we can see the Depka file reporting about this and the Depka file of course is an Israeli intelligence military website that reports on things and it says here the no Israeli casualties from Hezbollah rocket attacked on northern Israel and this was posted the 1st of September 2019. So Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, said, yes, we did it, we did it, and they, they, they screamed, and they shouted, and they said, we did it. They did nothing, because Israel knew about this. Israel is blessed by God with so much intelligence, um, the Mossad, and so on. They know exactly what Iran is doing and its proxies. They know where they are doing it and how they are doing it and they know the people that is doing it. And Israel being a defensive uh, force, the army of course, only strikes the terrorists. They do not strike a whole community when they defend itself. They only strike a certain, the, the attackers of course. Initial reports by the Hezbollah-affiliated Al-Manal network claim that a number of IDF soldiers were killed and wounded when a military vehicle, which was later described as an armored ambulance, sustained a direct hit from an anti-tank missile. The Israeli military apparently staged a deceptive tactic in which it conducted a helicopter evacuation of supposedly injured troops to Rambam Medical Center in the northern city of Haifa keeping the fact that no Israeli casualties had been suffered classified. Only after Hezbollah declared that their attack successfully wounded four Israeli soldiers, the IDF officially announced that there were no Israeli injuries or casualties, a statement that was later echoed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> בהתייעצויות לגבי ההמשך, הוריתי להיות ערוכים, כפי שאתם מכירים את זה, לכל תרחיש, ובהתאם להתפתחויות אנחנו נחליט גם על ההמשך. ברגע זה אני יכול להודיע ידיעה חשובה, אין לנו אף נפגע, לא פגוע ואפילו לא שרות. The IDF's deceptive tactics appear to have prevented a broad-scale escalation of the situation in northern Israel. The military's northern command had prepared in the last few days for the possibility that a large-scale terror attack by Hezbollah would have demanded a severe retaliatory attack from Israel that would have inevitably led to a counter-response and to an exchange of blows that would force both sides into an unwanted wide-scale conflagration. It's important to know that the current situation assessment in Jerusalem is that if Lebanon believes that revenge was exacted, that Israel is lying about its casualties, it will allow the state of alert to be lowered and to put an end to this incident. Military analysts caution, however, that if Lebanon feels feels that it was humiliated once again, this time by Israel's deceptive maneuver. Hezbollah may try to attack again, this time using a lower signature in hope of exacting revenge. That said, the IDF insists that it is well prepared for any development and underscore that it will continue with efforts to thwart Hezbollah from upgrading its vast arsenal of low-grade missiles. And then we can carry on. We see Lebanon, uh, they, they're supposed in breaking Israel, 
And the post read as follows, it says that, and this was posted on September the 2nd, 2019, it says, after firing the first shot, Lebanon begs U.S. and France to save them from Israel. Now, I want you to know something, that the person that's, that, that said this, and, and Lebanon is saying, please help us not to get into a conflict with Israel, because, friends, Hezbollah, is in Lebanon, but they are seen as a, as a state within a state. They control the southern part, the southern region of Lebanon. That's why Hezbollah has their own uh, force, their own army, and Lebanon has got their own army. And that's why the state said, please help us. Do not allow um, Israel to attack. Israel doesn't want to do it, of course, but they said, please help us. They beg for intervention and even from this website Arut Shiva it says how IDF maneuvered tricked Hezbollah <laughs> says that the IDF maneuver tricked Hezbollah by using deception in the face of the enemy and then and on the second paragraph it states in this post the IDF wanted to create a fog on the Lebanese side to allow Hezbollah to flaunt its achievement, achievement and meanwhile carried out a massive assault on Hezbollah. In Israel it was hoped that granting an achievement to Hezbollah would allow the incident to end quickly and prevent a deterioration to war. So you can see that Israel is not, they do not want war, but they will defend themselves against any nation that tries to attack it. And here we can see it was only used as a smoke screen. But the question of course is, and I'm going to talk about that for a few moments, for just a few minutes, who is Hezbollah? Who is Hezbollah? And where do they come from? Well, Hezbollah, the name Hezbollah means party of God. So they call themselves party of God. And of course, their God is, they refer to Allah as their God. They are Shiite Muslims, the same as Iran, and Shiite Muslims. Remember, you've got two groups of Muslims, Sunnis, who is considered most uh, by, by many people moderate and modern, and you've got the Shiites. And these two Muslim groups is always fighting each other. They are, of course, a terrorist group. Uh, they control most of Lebanon's media and is also in Lebanon's parliament. Many of this uh, people, Hezbollah members, are in parliament and they control the Lebanon media. The military force of Hezbollah is stronger than that of Lebanon's army. And Lebanon's army is being supported by the American army, by the American people. But Hezbollah has their own force and they are stronger than Lebanon's uh, own army. They are sometimes referred to as a state within a state. Here is Lebanon on the north of Israel and the southern part is controlled by this Hezbollah, the party of God, the so-called party of God. In particular, they control the southern part of Lebanon. Now, where did they come from? And I don't want to go into much detail, but it was actually uh, Jordanians, a mixture of Jordanians and Egyptians that was left in Israel and, uh, many years ago. And you can go do the study yourself. And they came to Jordan and Jordan said, they came back to Jordan. And Jordan said, no, we don't want you guys. You guys are extremists and they went up and they came to Syria and Syria said we don't want you carry on and they came into Lebanon and Lebanon by itself there are people the Lebanese people are really uh, they are people that they, they are peacekeeping people most of them but Hezbollah is not they are not they are a terrorist organization and so they settled in the southern part of of Lebanon and they've got one goal and that they are a proxy they submit to Iran supreme leader and they've got one goal and that is to destroy Israel from the global map and why why are they so preoccupied and you will see the anti-semitism in so many countries but let's just speak about the Muslim countries why are they so preoccupied with destroying Israel 
even in the West Bank and in Gaza and so on and so forth. The reason for that is because the Quran teaches it. The Quran teaches it. And maybe we'll do a study on that a little bit later in the future. But that is what their Quran teaches. Now, um, according to this website, CSIS, and it's, it stands for Center for Strategic and International Studies, um, they, they, they say Hezbollah's missiles and rockets. Hezbollah has since expanded its rocket force, today estimated at 130,000 rounds, according to this website. They say Hezbollah has got 130,000 rockets ready to be fired. They all stand and facing towards Israel and they are ready to rain down these rockets. At, the, at just the right command. That's why Iran is busy getting all its proxies ready around Israel, even in Sudan, and actually in Yemen, and then all over from, and in Gaza, and in Lebanon, and Iran itself, and in Syria. They're all waiting for the right command. Hezbollah is waiting for the command of its supreme leader to, to detonate and to, to, to make this strike on Israel. Hezbollah is the world's most heavily armed non-state actor with a large and diverse stockpile of unguided artillery rockets. This should actually scare the Hezbollah people themselves because it's unguided. In other words, they fire the rocket and who knows where it's going? Not even they know where it's going. They just have it. It's actually it's just a cylinder full of explosives and they have it and it's unguided. With a large and diverse stockpile of unguided artillery rockets, as well as ballistic, anti-air, anti-tank and anti-ship missiles. They are the largest, world's most heavily armed non-state actor. And they have all of these missiles and they are ready to use it, friends. They are ready to use it at the right time on the command of the supreme leader which is in Iran. And here we can see also from the Debka file, it was reported a little bit earlier on in this year, it says Nasrallah, which of course there you can see his face, he is the leader of the Hezbollah party. Israel units thinking of entering South Lebanon will be crushed on live TV and he's making these threats all the time. He says if any of Israeli people try to enter South Lebanon, they will be crushed on live TV. Now, of course, there is a prophecy which we are also going to discuss in the future. But Isaiah 10 verse 34 says the following. It speaks about the concerning Lebanon and it says, and he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron and Lebanon shall fall by a mighty one. And this is still a futuristic prophecy that needs to take place. And we see here that Lebanon is going to fall. And friends, you don't mess with God's people and with God's land. It's, you know, Israel is God's land. Doesn't matter what the people, what the media says, what, the, what, what people say. Israel is God's land. He said, it's mine. And you don't mess with Israel. And here the word of God clearly teaches that there is coming a time which, when God is going to destroy um, Lebanon, of course. Nasrallah warns, this is also from the Jerusalem Post a little bit earlier this year, it says, Nasrallah warns of war this summer. Worries he could be killed is reported. Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah warned to military commanders in a private meeting this week that there will be a war with Israel this summer. And he's speaking about this summer. They said there's a, there's a war coming and, and he said he briefed some of his soldiers and his high ranking officers and he said that he is afraid he might die in this war. I, there he says it in the next paragraph. I may not remain among you for very long. It is possible that the entire first level of leadership could be killed, including myself. Nasrallah reportedly said to the commanders. And of course, we know this is going to happen one of these days. 
Following the exchange of cross-border fire between Israel and Iran's Lebanese proxy Hezbollah, the IDF maintains a high level of alert, which according to a military official, is expected to last for several more days unless Hezbollah miscalculates Jerusalem's resolve to defend itself. A video that was published by the Hezbollah-linked al Manar network purports to show two anti-tank Cornet missiles being fired in the direction of a moving IDF armored vehicle. TV7's military experts confirm, based on the footage and separate discussions with Israeli security sources, neither of the rockets managed to hit the vehicle. They explain that unless the vehicle sustains a direct hit, the Wolf armored vehicle, commonly known by its Hebrew name, Ze'ev, is built, among others, to withstand a Cornet's recoil. One of our military experts underscore that while it is extremely hard for a Cornet missile to hit a moving target from a distance, he insisted that divine intervention prevented any Israeli casualties. Furthermore, Israeli defense officials clarified to TV7 that if there were soldiers wounded or, God forbid, killed by the anti-tank missiles, the situation would have deteriorated into an all-out war. The officials reveal that Israeli Air Force fighter jets were in position to devastate Hezbollah and to ensure that its entire missile project would have been wiped out. The Hezbollah leader, who spoke from a bunker in an undisclosed location, insisted that the attack altered the rules of engagement vis-à-vis -vis the Israeli theater, vowing to bring about havoc, the likes of which the Jewish state has never experienced before. <laughs> Responding to the threats voiced by Hassan Nasrallah, Prime Minister B. Minatania released a video statement of his own in which he ridiculed the Hezbollah leader for hiding in a bunker. Netanyahu further underscored that Israel will continue to do everything necessary in order to maintain the security of the Jewish state. <laughs> ואנחנו נמשיך לעשות כל מה שצריך כדי לשמור על ביטחון ישראל בים, ביבשה ובאוויר ואנחנו גם נמשיך לפעול נגד האיום של הטילים המדויקים. Now there is a certain song that is often and it's many times discussed among Bible uh, end time uh, prophecy students and those who study the eschatology and it's Psalm 83 from and I want us to read from verse 1 and let's just see what it says here. It says, a song, a song or psalm of Asaph. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make an tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken craftly counsel against thy people. Now he's speaking about the enemies. He says they have craftily taken counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come let us cut them off from being a nation. Wow, it sounds a lot like what's happening in the news right now, isn't it? From all the nations and from the Muslim nations that is that's saying, let's cut them off from that they can cease from being a nation. That the name of Israel may no longer be re in remembrance. Friends, it's happening. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles, and now he names this nation, Edom and the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites is most of the Arab nations. But Edomites are what, what we call today in Jordan. And where did I say was Hezbollah? Who are they actually? They are Jordanians. That's really where they come from. And you can go do your own research. They come from Jordan. So he says, now he, he names the nations. He says the tabernacle of Edom and the Ishmaelites, speaking about generally all the Arab people, of Moab, which is also, Moab is Jordan and the Hagarines, and this could refer to Egypt, because um, Hagar, she was, uh, she, she was an Egyptian slave, and so this could refer to Egypt. Gibal and Ammon. Now, Gibal is today in Lebanon, and Ammon again is in Jordan, and Amalek, 
the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Tyre, today, if you just type in Tyre on Google Maps or on Google Earth, it will take you directly to Lebanon. It's inside Lebanon. And also it says the Philistines, and the Philistines of course are those that are living in Gaza and in the West Bank, and they all want, they all want the Jewish state destruction. They want the end, they want to kill all the Jews and chase them into the sea. Exactly as the Psalm says. And now it says Asur also joined with them. And we will come to, to that name Asur in a little while in a future if, uh, lesson that we will teach. And now he's speaking about these nations that is coming into alignment to come against Israel. For what reason? What are their motives in context of this psalm? It is, friends, to cut them off, to stop them, to see that, they, that there cease to be a nation. That is their motive, if you read the psalm. The question, of course, is when is this event going to take place? Some ask, has this event already, did it take place? Well, some will say, yes, it did take place. And if you ask, when did it take place? They cannot tell you. Is this a one, once-off event or is this a continuous event? Of course, the Bible teaches in Ecclesiastics 1.9 that there is nothing new under the sun. It says that what was, what sh shall be. What was, shall be. And what is, um, it was. In other words, that is the way uh, Jewish scholars and rabbis look at their eschatology. That history keeps on repeating itself. So if that event, this event did take place, it will take place again. But I can see, and I believe you can see, that if you read the psalm, and you look at the news, which I've just shown you, the tip of the iceberg. You basically are reading the news in Psalm 83. So this war, when is it going to take place? Is it going to take place? Has it already taken place? Is it going to be once off or is it, is it just to continue? I believe with all of my heart, it is, it's, it's partly to still be fulfilled. And that's why you will see like uh, in this specifically news, channel there was a discussion going on and the 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 the, the uh, reporter asked a question and then he said prospect of a summer conflict will there be a, a summer conflict and they said yes it's coming there's no there's no two ways about it so but if you go and read the psalm 83 you see that jordan jordan is mentioned and hezbollah are Jordanians. They are basically Jordanians. Tyre and Gibal, which is of course in Lebanon. Friends, this is interesting and it's exciting times in which we are living. We're speaking about wars and rumors of wars. Look at this tweet that Intel Sky and Intel Sky, they are, you can say they are like, like a garden looking over all of that's happening in the Middle East and they are reporting about movement, military movement in the Middle East and they, they tweeted this not too long ago. In fact, it was the 8th of April this year, 2019, and they said, they, 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 they tweeted and they said something is planned in the Middle East. Several armored vehicles arrived to Kuwait last month, 6th of March, 2019. The number of tanks can neither be counted nor determined. That was their tweet. The question is, what is going on? What, what is all these tanks doing in Kuwait? Some might say, well, it is America pulling back and they are going to load the tanks. They say they do not know. But something is going on. And we know from recent news that, of course, there's this chase, this, this race to develop Iran, to develop nuclear weapons and even more harsher missiles that can do more damage. But we know the outcome. We know that God is going to intervene. Now there is coming a time where God is going to lift his hand for just a short period of time from the nation. And that time is called the seven years of tribulation.
The last three and a half years of that tribulation time, it's called the Great Tribulation or the time of Jacob's trouble. Actually, the whole seven years is called the, the time of Jacob's trouble. But from that three and a half years, the last three and a half years of the seven years of tribulation, God is going to lift His hand from Israel. And of course, the reason is for Israel's salvation, that so many people will be saved. So many Jews could come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And there will be, there will be uh, Jews receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And in fact, at the end of the seven years, Jesus will appear to them and they will see the scars in his hand. And they will say, where, where did you get to receive the scars? And he will say, in the house of my friends. And friends, this is going to happen. But for now, Israel is capable. They are ready to defend themselves. They've got awesome uh, weaponry. They've got the most sophisticated weaponry, intelligence. They've got the Iron Dome, the Raphael, David Sling. Actually, Raphael, is, it seems like it's the company that's, that's supplying the Iron Dome. And this is how it detects all the missiles that's coming from Gaza and so on. And it just shoots it off. And I'll show you the videos. And they have this David Sling. And they've, they're always, they are always upgrading their weaponry. And also with the Gog, Magog invasion, which is going to take place still in the future, uh, the, God is going to supernaturally take care of that war. But today we have studied wars and rumors of wars. Let's just move to the, to the final point of this message and let's just look at two more slides. American F-35 deployed to the Middle East and of course uh, it, it, Benjamin Netanyahu said and he said to Iran, our new F-35 jets, which is made by America, they said, and it's only been equipped with their own, with Israel's own uh, uh, things, their weaponry and intelligence and so on. But they have this F-35 jets that can reach anywhere in the Middle East. There's wars and rumors of wars. And even now today there was a post uh, in Fox News and listen to what it says. Iran is developing a new compound in Syria. And the reason for this is to house its troops and to shift weaponry into Syria. And we know, as I've already stated in the previous prophecy update, the Golan Heights, that the war of Gog Magog is going to take place, and it, it's, they're going to enter from the north, from the Golan or the Bashan, it was called in the Old Testament, they're going to enter there. It's vis-a-vis -vis Syria. And now we see Iran has just developed a new compound in Syria that's been identified by also uh, of course by, by, by Israel and friends all of these things that I've shown you is like Noah's Ark standing as a testimony as a sign telling you that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is at hand and I want to ask you very sincerely if you should die now where will you end up? Where will you go? Because you see all of these things happening. The, Jesus, the, 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 the return of the Lord Jesus Christ could happen at any moment. But just for a moment, let's just shift that aside. You can die any moment, even before Jesus comes. And where will you end up? In, will you go to heaven or will you go to hell? If you have not repented of your sins and if you've not placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will not enter heaven's gates. You will not, you will not see the glory and the kingdom of God, but you will surely end up in hell. And I'm not saying this to, uh, to, with any gladness. I'm saying this and I'm telling you this, that you have time right now to make right with God. 
You see the signs of the times. You see that everything is drawing to an end. The curtains is closing for the nations. Everything is coming to an end. Jesus Christ is about to come and fetch his bride. Will you go with, with him when he comes right now? Or even before that, if you should die now, will you go to heaven or will you go to hell? The Bible says everybody has sinned and it separates them from God. But Jesus Christ died on the cross that if you place your faith in him, you will not perish but have everlasting life. And you need to follow him. And maybe you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you want to do that right now. I'm going to pray a prayer. The repetition of words will not save you. But that which comes from the heart. I'm just going to simply help you. Because the Bible says in Romans 10 verse 9. That if you confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. So you need to confess. And I'm only going to help you. So if you are sincere and you want to give your life over to Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Just there where you are. Close your eyes and pray with me. Say, dear Heavenly Father. I know I'm a sinner. On my way to hell. I need a Savior. And there is only one. His name is Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, with my mouth, I confess that you died for me, that your precious blood was shed for me. Please wash away all my sin. Cleanse me. And Lord, thank you that I'm now a new creation in Christ Jesus. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you've prayed that prayer sincerely, the Bible says that everybody that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And I want to know about your decision because we want to send you a free booklet. And I want to encourage you to keep on, if you've prayed that prayer, to stay at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Stay in His Word. Study the Word of God. Let the Word of God become everything, becomes everything to you. Eat the Word of God. Drink the Word of God. Sleep the Word of God. Do everything. Just indulge yourself in the Word of God and God will surely reveal His Word and He will break His Word and give you revelation knowledge in His Word. And I, I'm, I pray that I will hear from you. And if you've liked and enjoyed this message, please share it with others and refer others to our YouTube channel that others might be blessed. And I hope to see you soon. And please go and visit our website as well, www.dionolers.co.za. Go and visit that website, and I pray that you will be blessed um, by it. And I pray that I will see you with the next session. Keep on watching for the soon appearing King. I am watching and praying. God bless you. Amen.
לראות את ה... שיגורים מעטיפת ברזל שאנחנו נמצאים כאן ממש מאחורינו. אנחנו מנסים, אנחנו מנסים לאתר, והנה אני רואה פיצוץ אחד שכבר... Thank mm-hmm. you.